the town of trustees meeting of Wednesday, November 13th, 2019 to order. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, sir. Trustee Burak? Here. Trustee Smith? Here. Trustee Wakeman? Here. Trustee Ehrlich? Here. Mayor Woodcock? Here. Uh, Trustee um, Holly Trailer and Mayor Pro Tem Austin are absent. Agenda approval. Do we have any additions or deletions? I move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens' comments? Citizens' comments? No one? All righty. Moving on. Appointments to the Great Outdoors Millican Committee. It's going to be... Uh, Town Administrator, Tim Singwold. The board wanted to look at developing the Parks and Trails uh, Committee again, which is the Greater Outdoors Millican Committee, known as Go Mill. We advertised at Beef and Bean Day on the websites and uh, have uh, spread the word by newsletters and word of mouth. We've had two focus groups already uh, to kick off the Go Mill group. Uh, we've had really good turnout and a very surprising uh, amount of folks turning up to help that have amazing qualifications. Uh, I've never seen uh, a group for parks and trails come together where so many people were way overqualified to help out on the project. Uh, I was very excited to see uh, the level of commitment and dedication and enthusiasm that we had. Uh, at our last meeting, we asked uh, those that were there that wanted to be on the board to fill out applications. Um, Administrative Assistant uh, Tammy Burns uh, handled all of that. And she put together the applications in the packet for you tonight. And I believe quite a few of the people are here uh, to speak to the board, if you would like, and see if uh, you would be <coughs> interested in appointing them to the new Go Mill group. How many people do we have here that filled out applications? Sweet. So you want to bring them up one at a time, or you want to bring them up all together? <laughs> you guys, so that's the way we can. We only have two applications in. They're all online. The rest of them are in your packet. Those online. Were just given to me yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. The rest. The, yeah. The rest of them are in your mm -hmm. packet. So you want to bring them up individually? I'm asking you guys. Sure. Who do you want to call first? I don't have my tablet, so I can't look at those. You could have them come up and stand in line and explain who they are and give no, a little back. Like yeah. yeah, that'd be great. That's great. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, Tim. Yeah. 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 Whoever's here that applied for the uh, for the position, can you all come on up? <laughs> Stand up here in a line. Can you introduce yourselves one by one? Tell a little bit about the Ask questions. Be great. It's easier to let them There you go. See, he's got it. He's already at the podium. Already. Already. <laughs> uh, so my name is Brandon Smith. Uh, I've been a resident in Milliken for about a year now. 
Um, my background, I'm actually an applications developer for HPE, um, but I also am, run a nonprofit called Colorado Addicted Trailblazer Society, also known as CATS. Uh, so actually, we build trail in northern Colorado area. Um, I'm also a trail leader technical advisor for three other uh, restoration um, organizations, trail building organizations. Um, and I have a massive passion for being outdoors and bringing uh, native elements to the outdoors. Um, so that's kind of my, my passion and why I wanted to join the, the board because we've got a, or the committee because we've got a lot of cement parks out here. I'd like to see some more native ones. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon. My name, hi. My name is Paula Rodriguez. I've lived in Millican for 16 years now. My kids went to school here. And um, I live out at Mill Iron, and there's, I like to run and ride my bike, and there's no place safe out there to run or ride your bike. Um, I love being outdoors. I like to fish. I like to do landscaping. I'm also a, I've also been a real estate agent for 23 years. And I'm just really interested in being part of this committee because I think there's so much that the town has to offer as far as being able to develop um, opportunities for families, people, our kids, you know, to get onto the trails and get outside. And I'm just excited to, you know, that I could be part of this committee, hopefully. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. I'm a little taller than everybody else. Uh, I'm Victoria Mel. I've been here exactly two months um, from Longmont, Colorado. Uh, I was a huge community member over there. I was involved in a lot of things that have to do with kids. I am a special needs nurse, so I take care of special needs children. Um, I also am the uh, board chair and ED for a nonprofit called Kitty's Long Branch. We're a residential preparatory ranch for 16 to 19 year old boys. And our plan is to come into this area with that ranch into Weld County. Um, and when I was uh, invited by a lady I was just buying toys from, um, she said that, you know, they're trying to revitalize the parks and do some special needs stuff. I, as a mother and as a nurse that takes care of special needs children, it's extremely difficult to find playgrounds or sites for these children and so I have to travel all over to find them and in that I feel like I could help in the fact that I understand special needs children, I understand what they appeal to, I understand their sensory needs and I've been to a couple of really cool parks that I think we could maybe add some stuff locally so that not only can my children play but then I can call people and go don't come to Fort Collins, go to Millican. So <laughs> that's why I want to be a part of this. Thank you. My name is Amber Rather. I am yes. a citizen for recently a year now, coming back from Windsor. I moved here to Millican to raise my kids intentionally because this was the community and the type of community I wanted to raise my kids in. So I'm glad to be back and owning a home here and part of the community. I come from a background of construction management. I have built um, various regional parks and helped with the development of that. I've also done vertical construction. I understand all the civil aspects of it and help with budgetary pricing, keep this within our means, and also find resources to give us more means. <coughs> Thanks, Amber. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. My name is Ron Barnhart. I've lived in Millican for two and a half years, moved here from Northeast Ohio, a retired city planner, love to fish and hunt. <laughs> oh, you cut that short, Rod. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> My name is Beth Richens. Um, I've lived here just over a year and a half. Um, I grew up in Utah. I lived on a cattle ranch, learned how to um, fix fence, grow potatoes, um, hike, fish, all sorts of outdoor activities. It's in my blood. I would love to help any way I can. I know how to work hard and I love people and I'm willing to serve. Aww. Thanks, Beth. Cool. Thank you, Beth. Thanks. 
Mr. Mayor, in addition to the citizens that uh, have applied, we've got two board members that have applied and a total of three staff who have applied. And uh, uh, I would suggest that we... Now, how many total do we have, Tammy? Okay, so that would, the go mill is set at 13 members, Nobody. so uh, that would give us a full board. If uh, you saw uh, that you would like to have all of them on the board, that would fill that board up. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. more the merrier. Yeah, I think we should say that the staff people are from the board members are Scott. Holly. Are you one of them? I'm one of them. Holly's the other. Holly's the other. Mm -hmm. On the board. Uh, who's the staff? Um, Tammy would uh, be a staff <coughs> member, and so oh, would uh, Keith. Keith. Mm -hmm. And we have Travis has grown up in uh, Millican, okay. and he asked if it would be okay for him to get on the board, too. And I think that would put us at 13, is that correct? Sounds like a pretty good crew. Yes, everybody's it's wanting to be there. Yeah. 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 Yes. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should join. Okay. And we still have other people that would like to get on to help out that would come on as alternates, but you would not need to appoint them. Yes. We've had a great uh, startup for this program. How about you? you? Got any questions? No. 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 Move to approve. Oh, you've entered. Yep. No. I'll take a motion then. Do we need to name okay. everybody in well, a motion? Can we just a, can we just appoint him, or do we have to do a motion to appoint him? How do you want that done? I would take a, mo a motion to appoint all the applicants if that's what we're okay. doing. Yep. Um, should we establish <coughs> if there's a time period or until? Yeah. Is there a time period? on the actual position itself or is it just a run for all i don't That's like that i don't remember seeing a time limit on that but uh in their first meeting they could uh um i definitely think there needs to be a time limit because you know we don't need career politicians so <laughs> I make a motion we approve all the applicants. I second. The great outdoor Millican don't have that board. Second. Town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Wakeman. Yes, with pleasure. <laughs> Trustee Smith. Yes, except what? <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> Trustee Ehrlich. Yes. Trustee Burak. Yes. Mayor Woodcock. Yes. Motion passed. I'd just like to say that it's awesome that that many people applied for this because We've tried to get other volunteers for other things in this town, and we can't get anybody to step up. So thank you all. Yes, yes. thank you. Very Appreciate welcome, it. everybody. Absolutely. So we were trying to bribe them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did we provide food for that meeting? <laughs> no. Did we bribe them to get here? Uh, I, I think it sure. was pizza. <laughs> <laughs> just checking. It was an outdoor grill. <laughs> all right, uh, moving on. Minutes of the previous meetings. Do you guys have anything you happy with? Um, Any changes? I've got one question for Cheryl. That's okay. if, if we're uh, talking about this respect to Ordinance 776 in this deal, is there something that's changed in the minutes then? No, the minutes are <coughs> public comments, so there's nothing that needs to be changed in that. Okay. I don't know if you're in the action agenda. Mm -hmm. okay. You guys have any questions? No. Nope. Nope. <coughs> motion we approve minutes is printed. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Tom Meshrader's report. Another busy couple of weeks. Um, in the minutes from uh, the last meeting, you'll see that there was a request for me to meet with the uh, Historic Society Board. Uh, that was done. I met with the uh, Historic Society and uh, went through a lot of different issues that they uh, questioned and uh, have a bunch of information for them and for the town on that. Um, I welcomed Wade Nickerson, our new town finance uh, director, uh, to town and uh, gave him the drive around town, um, tried to cover a lot of the spots that are critical and uh, I didn't do as good a job with him as Lois Ann did with me when she showed me around town, but uh, he did get a good feel of the town. Uh, Wade was introduced to the board at the work session tonight, and uh, he's starting on our budget. Um, I've had several meetings with respect to the pool. I see that's on our agenda later this evening. Uh, I um, have several suggestions for the board in that respect. Uh, we finalized construction. Uh, this construction phase on the vault in the downstairs of the town hall and um, we're at the point now that we're getting it all situated and sorted together. Um, during the freeze we had a fish kill on Ehrlich Lake. A homeowner over there called and I ran over and uh, walked the side of the lake and looked to see what happened. Um, we aren't certain what happened yet, but a lot of shad had died. Um, I've talked with uh, Mike Gru Gruing, uh, is the uh, game and fish guy in the area, and he's checking it out. There's quite a bit of algae in the lake. Um, there were some aerators that haven't been working, some have been. Uh, I've been. Keaton Industries lives up by me. We're getting them all fixed. I dropped them off with uh, those folks. But we have an algae situation where there's a lot of algae suspended in the water. There are groups that handle that, and I didn't know. We haven't done any algae mitigation on the lakes for quite a while. My understanding is in the past we have done that. Um, I'd like to get some direction from the board if they'd like me to look into that. I've got different people I've worked with that are um, certified to, to work on that and uh, I've administered several lakes with them and they're they're very uh, good. The, ga the guys at Game and Fish, Mike that I talked to is very aware of them too. They've got a great reputation in the area. Um, Wade, uh, finance director and myself have been looking at how we can raise revenues in the town by annexing some of the well pads in the area. We've met with a couple of the landowners who have well pads on their property and they were agreeable to the process. Um, we're looking at working out all the details probably by Thanksgiving and maybe having a presentation to the board in that time frame of uh, starting annexations through our planning department and give you some update on that. Um, when we're looking at bringing in oil revenues by annexing uh, well pads, we get into a 5.5 restriction on assets. Um, we did go through a partial debrucing as a town several years ago and there's a, there's a restriction of 5.5 and that restriction could be eliminated allowing those oil revenues to go to the benefit of the town for a period of time for the town to get on its feet. You know, it would gradually go up to where we get more money each year over, over the next few years once they come on. But if we were able to eliminate that restriction 
we could take all of it up front and we'd be able to get things done in town quicker. Uh, we're going to have to look into that a little more. That would require going to the citizens of Milliken and getting them to vote on that so that we could use all those funds as they come in. So that would be a uh, education process uh, to get everything out to people so that they'd understand why this was needed and what the benefit is. We would also want to start working once we got some of the roads fixed, some of the parks fixed. We, Wade and I, I think he's taken off now. Oh, he's still he's here. He's still here. We talked about once we got to a certain point, lowering the mill levy, which would make um, the town area more desirable to some of the retail people that may have an interest in coming in and helping out the citizens by lowering the mill levy. So we've got a, a long-term plan there, but uh, hopefully by this Thanksgiving, we're going to get a start on that. I've got a meeting in Greeley tomorrow on water rates. Greeley raised our water rates by 16%. Uh, our other water supplier in the area, Central Weld, raised our water rates by 4% a year for the next several years. Uh, that puts us backwards on our water right now. Our benefit is we just recently got our RO plant back on and uh, another project for our new finance director, Wade, over there is to figure out how we can best work our different water sources so that we don't need to raise water rates too much, but it looks like we're going to have to raise water rates a little bit. Uh, we're going to be working on that over the next few months and hopefully have something uh, figured out by the first of the year uh, by request of the board. Uh, we are coming up with a plan for Cherry Street to finish uh, the storm drain on the north side of town, back behind town hall, going over towards Josephine, and for fixing the roads on that back side of town over there. Um, and we should have more information by the next meeting on that. Um, that's enough for now. Any questions? Um, could we have an update on that? light at Alice I'm sorry um, I have a meeting tomorrow at 2 30 it is a pre-con meeting with Excel we finally got them to come to the table uh, the restriction on getting that complete has been Excel and we need to get the uh, wires that go on the north side of State Highway 60 underground over under uh, Alice Street there if we put poles up they would uh, hit the wires right now. So that's been the holdup all along. Uh, first meeting, our first discussion with them was March 21st, 2019, trying to get that done, saying we wanted to have these street lights up and in place by the school year. Um, we fell way behind on that. So tomorrow we got the meeting. They're coming in and all the parties are in place. The poles are up, as you can see. All we got to do is run the wire and get the lights up and hang the cross arms, and that would go pretty quick once we get XL to the table. Hopefully, that'll be in the next few days. Anything else, Wade? Mm -mm. no? Consent agenda. You guys have a few questions? Do you want to run a motion to approve the consent agenda? <coughs> I just need a motion. Move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Tom Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Burak? Yes. Mayor Woodcock? Yes. Motion passed.
Uh, action agenda. At this time, the town board is going to convene as a liquor licensing authority. And we're going to go into, as a liquor licensing authority, for consideration, approval, or renewal of a hotel and restaurant license for the Burnout Grill. Um, will the town clerk take it from here? Um, Mayor and trustees, as you know, I can administratively approve a renewal liquor license. Um, in this case, um, due to some circumstances that have occurred with this, I did not want to do that administratively. I wanted to bring it to you um, so you're apprised of, of what's going on with the burnout grill. Um, Ms. Jennings is currently the owner, has been the owner since it opened. Um, and she is, uh, has been in the process of trying to sell the Burnett Grill. Um, she thought she had a good applicant um, not too long ago, or about eight months ago. Yeah. Um, and that fell through. Um, she needs to renew her license um, that expired on uh, September 14th in order for her to do a transfer to a potential new um, buyer who's also with her um, tonight. Yes. Um, so she can turn the burnout grill over to them with the transfer of the liquor license. Do you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. Come to the podium. If you want to ask them, I'll go to the podium. Mm -hmm. Can you two go to the podium for me, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, so got name and address. Okay, so I'm I'm Danny Jennings, and I have currently I own the Burnout Grill. Um, I have been in the process of selling it for two years. I had one really good applicant, applicant, or we thought he defaulted on everything, as I was out of town almost the entire year. Um, I rushed back to the aid came Lacey <laughs> McKay, who. Um, is taking is going to take over ownership the delinquency comes because I didn't realize that these problems were arising at the grill because I was out of town um, talking with Lacey and Lacey dealing with the police we have had officer Colts and officer sprites are in to take a look at our Friday night businesses again to make sure that everything is up and up and I think we are completely in line to start being a productive part of the Millican Business Associ or Society again. So there was a hiccup. I apologize for that. I am asking you to just okay it and we're going to start over. All of your bartenders um, will be TIP certified as yes. well? Yes, yes. Uh, they are. They've already got that in line. This is Lacey McKay. She's going to be the new owner. This is um, Michelle Kesterman. She is the on-site permanent manager. Okay. Okay. So she oversees everything, which is something we've never had. So it's definitely then. Now there's three of them: Lacey, her husband Daniel, and Michelle. And I think they're running a very, a very tight ship, doing a very good job. Great. Um, and if I could just add a couple of things. Um, by the way, I'm Lacey McKay. Um, as we said, all of our bartenders are cert uh, tip certified now. We also have an instant report book that we have no issue showing um, you guys. We have no issue showing the police officers when they come in. Um, we have asked the police officers to please do a walkthrough on Friday nights and Saturday nights because those are our busiest nights. Um, we have had a couple come in already. Um, they did it on Halloween or Halloween party night and everything was great. Um, we also have somebody that is pretty much a bouncer for us on um, Fridays and Saturdays. He's also there Monday through Thursday. Um, he owned a bar way back in the day, so he pretty much knows what to do for me. Um, and we also have no issues cutting people off. We've had a lot of upset customers. <laughs> Um, Which means it's good business. <laughs> but we definitely, we definitely have no issue cutting people off. Every single person that walks in the door is ID'd. Um, and if we have any questions, we're just not serving them. So, great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, my two cents would be I'm Michelle Hester, said I'm the manager. Um, we, we have been a few glitches along the way. There have been quite a few, but we are working through everything. Everything's 
going a lot smoother than it was. A few things arose that we never thought would arise, but everything's been taken care of. Danny and Lace here, Johnny on the spot with what we need, like she said. The officers, the police department has been good to work with us. Our distributors, everybody's been good to work with us. John, our the police guy, John Irwin, he's been great to work with us. So little by little, everything's coming back together, and, and it will be way better than it definitely has been for the last years. It'll be a good thing. Great. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So can you explain how, how it is that you can operate on a, an expired license? Um, they give you 90 days. I move to approve the renewal of the hotel and restaurant license for Burnout Grill, located at 1760 Broad Street, Unit A, Millican, Colorado, for the period of September 14th, 2019 until September 14th, 2020, with the added requirement that TIP certifications of individuals who will be serving alcohol be filled with the town clerk, filed with the town clerk, excuse me. Do we need to have the correct date or not? Do I have a second? Second. Other dates? Put the town clerk call for a vote. Yes, sir. Uh, Trustee Burak. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Trustee Smith. Yes. Trustee Ehrlich. Yes. Mayor Woodcock. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I welcome you all to come in and discuss. And dinner's on me. Oh. <laughs> 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 It's time to look at licensing authority adjourns and reconvenes as a town board. Next on the action agenda item is the ratification of Ordinance 776. Um, kind of just has to do with some minor things that we need to fix at the last meeting. Um, do I have a motion to put a ratify? This thing right here? Yeah. Yeah. I move that the Board of Trustees recognize the closing of the public hearing on Ordinance 776 on October 23rd, 2019, when the presiding officer inadvertently closed public comment, and that the Board ratify the subsequent adoption of Ordinance 776. Second. Town Clerk. Trustee Smith, did you second? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trustee Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Burak? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Woodcock? Yes. Really quick though, before we go on to the next one, I missed Trustee Wakeman. I didn't catch her on my side. She had a couple questions on this. So, motion passed, but we're still going to have a follow up on it. So. Um, <coughs> could we just have a clarification on the um, effective date of, of the ordinance with this action? Uh, I'm going to, I don't believe this will impact the effective date of the ordinance. So it would take effect uh, in accordance with publication rules that we already started publishing it? No. 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 Okay. So, so it's, I wanted to have this okay. So it'll, first. it'll take effect when publication is completed. Thirty days. Mm -hmm. Thirty uh, days after publication. Okay. Good old thirty days. All right. <coughs> Next item on the action agenda is consideration for approval of resolution nineteen tax seventeen in support of Boulder Scientific and Project Lighthouse. Mayor and Trustees, before you this evening is a resolution in support of uh, Boulder Scientific and Project Lighthouse. I believe we have a representative here from upstate Colorado. I haven't had a chance to meet her yet. Um, the background is that Boulder Scientific, as you know, owns some property with the incorporated, within the incorporated limits of Millican. 
Uh, the property is located at the northwest corner of Highway 257 and Highway 60. And the property owners um, and new investors are working with the area's economic development group of State Colorado to secure incentives and support for construction of a new manufacturing facility estimated at a total cost of $70 million. They're also estimating employment numbers of 100 new jobs over the next eight years. Um, the investors indicate that they are looking at various Colorado jurisdictions um, as well as jurisdictions in other states. Um, so Upstate Colorado has requested local support for the project, which is named Project Lighthouse. Uh, there are no budget implications as the resolution indicates support of the project without a financial commitment from the town. And so um, <coughs> at your leisure, we have some representative here from upstate Colorado if you would like to hear from them. You guys want to talk about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you guys come up to the podium for us, please? <coughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Rich Horner. I am president and CEO of Upstate Colorado Economic Development. I want to thank you for your time this evening. Um, we're here um, to, uh, to discuss the letter that is in front of you that shows support <coughs> for uh, the company and the project that they are currently undertaking. Um, I will introduce Audrey Herbison, who is our economic development manager, who can answer any questions as to the details of the project. Um, but again, we just want to thank you for your time as the company has been looking at locations um, not only here but also out of state. Um, we have been working to get them um, some preliminary information and your town staff has been uh, absolutely fantastic in working, uh, working through these very preliminary parts of the process. Good evening. I'm Audrey Herbison Hi. with Upstate Colorado. Do you guys have any questions for them? Well, we have them standing here. No? Um, could you give us a synopsis of what the procedure will be once we approve this resolution or act on the resolution? Um, the company is considering the locations um, for the new facility. Um, the support will be provided to the company and they will take that into consideration as they move forward. Basically, it says that we're supporting them coming to Milliken. Nothing financial or anything right now. Right. So. At this point, do you know what they would be planning on doing if they did choose the Milliken site? Um, they would be developing a, uh, a site. Um, I apologize, I don't have the square footage in front of me, but it is quite a large investment between 70 and $80 million, um, plus initially 15 new employees and 100 over eight years. I believe it's about a seven acre site, is what mm -hmm. I want to say, five to seven acres. I think it's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Are they going off past plans that they've already submitted? I apologize, I, I do not know. Okay. Hyper well. Because they have <laughs> submitted years ago. <clears throat> Due to quasi -jur, you know, judicial proceedings, I, I can tell you that we have received a minor site plan or a minor uh, plat application. Um, it has um, where I'm waiting for some additional documents <coughs> to deem it complete and for it to pass a completeness review. So at this point in time, um, that's what we've received from, from the company. So they're serious that they've already invested that much? Yeah. Okay. So basically then this our resolution in support of of their project is for upstate Colorado to proceed as the, uh, the letter itself is actually directed to um, the company and the uh, consultants who are working with the company. Um, you know as we go through this process and work with any any community and any any project, um, being in economic development, we want to um, be able to show the company um, that they are uh, welcome in a, in a community, that the, that the community is willing to work with them. So that just helps along in the process. As you can denote from this particular letter, it does not obligate the company to any additional financial incentives. Um, but as an update, the state of Colorado and Weld County are coming alongside this project to offer some additional assistance to the company. 
Okay. Any other questions? My computer died. No. Thank you very much for coming up and talking to us. Um, motion. I'll take a motion. I move to approve resolution number 19-17 in support of the potential construction of a new manufacturing facility by Boulder Scientific. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, that's a hard one. It's okay. <laughs> You're paying. Oh, <laughs> Do you do that too? No. Nothing about it. I was about to. Sound clerk, please call for a vote. Yes, sir. Um, Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Trustee Smith. Yes. Trustee Burak. Yes. Trustee Ehrlich. Yes. Mayor Woodcock. Yes. The motion passed. Well, that's it for the action agenda. We're going to the discussion agenda. We have municipal court guidelines. Anything Mr. Here? Mayor, uh, we have Fred Long, who is the prosecuting attorney for the town of Millican <coughs> present. He's been requesting guidance from the board, and we've had questionnaires and whatnot. Uh, Mr. Long, would you come on up and introduce yourself? I think you've met several of the folks. Um, but uh, he would like to discuss <coughs> the community court with you, the, the court uh, process, and get some direction from the board. Uh, hi all, uh, as Tim said, my name's Fred Long, uh, prosecuting attorney. I've uh, been doing prosecution work for you guys now for a few months, um, and I've been doing prosecuting work for various other towns in northern Colorado for uh, almost two years now. Um, coming in uh, to just briefly, and then I'll get into some guidelines that I'd like from you guys, but um, two major things that I'm looking at uh, in, in the last few months have been uh, trying to improve efficiencies in the municipal court, um, and then also um, wanted to commend the town on their community court program. Um, in my experience so far in other, uh, other towns, there's a gap for um, uh, children who get cited in for some sort of a uh, uh, municipal code violation or something like that and the question for especially small towns is well what do we do with these kids um, and the community court program here has been fantastic so um, really my goal um, right now the best thing that I could see to help the town out my role as the prosecutor is to make things more efficient um, and that's where I need guidelines from you guys um, we sent a questionnaire out with some suggestions um, and requesting feedback and I'm here to answer any questions that you guys may have Question. So my question is, do we need changes? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's the board's job to sit here and micromanage a court. When they, that should be up to the police chief, the judge, and everybody that you've been working with over the uh, life of our court system. If it's not broke, well, we, why are we changing it? Um, uh, to be quite frank, attorneys can be expensive. I get it. And I think that there are some things that we can do uh, within the current system to essentially save the town money um, in what they're paying uh, me, my firm, um, and staff for attendance at the uh, court sessions. Um, to provide you with an example, um, the way things are broken out right now is we have essentially two arraignment sessions, uh, one that starts at 1 o'clock for the adults, one that starts at 3.30 for the juveniles. Um, I think that if we were to condense and have just one arraignment session, um, we can still stack the juveniles at the back end of the docket. Um, but then uh, if there was a short, shorter amount of uh, individuals on the docket for that day, um, then I would be here for less time. Um, versus uh, if we have more people, then we still can accommodate that. Uh, but starting at 1 o'clock or 3.30 or whatever works for staff, right, that's a decision you guys don't have to make. Um, that's one suggestion. Um, it's essentially getting y'all's approval for um, moving in that direction. And if, you're, if your directive is work it out with town staff and work it out with the judge and work it out with the chief, that's fine. Um, uh, we just wanted to have some input from, from you if there were specific things you wanted done with the muni court process. And personally, I didn't fill the application out because I have no expertise. 
yeah. in that area. So I, I, I failed to fill it out for that reason. Uh, understood. And if, and if your directive or your feeling is that you'd rather it just be worked out between myself and all the other parties involved, that's fine. That's your directive. So, you know. Yeah, go in the court, sir. Can I tell you? Um, I, I have faith in Sylvia and um, whatever she needs, so she'll let you know. Sylvia's been great to work with. No, I would say, for the most <coughs> part, come up with something, work with Tom Administrator, Police Chief, you guys. I mean, you guys. We're not going to tell you how to run your business. I don't know how to do it. Give us a game plan what you're doing and implement it. I mean, if you guys see things that need to get fixed, say, hey, this is what we came up with and this is what we're implementing. Run with it. I mean, it's not our, I'm not going to hold your hand and say, do it this way. Just to throw one more issue out here that, that uh, I think the town, the board legitimately has some uh, authority in regard to would be whether we should transition the court to a court of record. Um, and, and, you know, we can certainly handle that in consultation with the town administrator, but it's a fairly significant issue that could involve some expenditure, but it could also have some benefits. The largest primary benefit um, from a prosecutor's perspective is going to court of record. Uh, the max fines and punishments that could be imposed by the court jump from their current level, being a non-court of record, at $300 um, and up to 90 days in jail. So if you become a court of record, it's $2,650 per offense um, and up to one year in jail, 364 days. Um, that provides me when we're dealing with a wide variety of viol potential violations. Um, I have more room to work with as a prosecutor uh, in, in my discretion. Yeah. How does that play with the community court aspect of it? Say that again? Going court of record, community court, how does that transition? Or can uh, the, keep them separate? The way that I see um, community court m moving forward is it's still an aspect of the Millican court. Um, our community court proceedings would then just be on the record, same as our um, prosecution of uh, uh, adults. It, it'd be the same. Um, the, the other um, uh, advantage to going to court of record, again, from a prosecutor's perspective, is say we get a result, I get a, guil uh, a guilty verdict in court, um, and defendant obviously doesn't like it, right? So they want to appeal it. If they were to appeal it um, and were not a court of record, um, it, I have to try the whole case again to the county, a county judge. Um, versus if you become a court of record, uh, a record is being made um, and it's uh, just an, uh, an appeals process at that point. I don't have to put on a whole new trial. Those are the two biggest advantages from my perspective as being a prosecutor. I think the biggest thing I'm going to the quarter record is finding out what the price is going to cost to kind of do that transition so we know we can budget for it. We're in budget, so we need to know what it's going to cost us. Is it, is it just recording devices, though? Well, that's what... I think the primary expense is uh, implementing a recording system. So your two primary expenses that I would see is equipment um, and which... I mean, you guys have a nicer courtroom than a lot of other ones that I've been in. Um, uh, and the second thing is uh, a file retention system. Um, so that's going to involve some sort of staff time, um, learning that new system um, and making that work. So that might be more of an upfront cost, but once we have systems in place, it might taper off. I think we've got a lot of those things in place already, and we've got a non-staff IT person. I can have Steve give some uh, guesstimation to you on what the cost will be. Uh, maybe we can find a court of records somewhere that we can check what kind of records they're keeping, town about our size or something. Maybe another one that you're working in and we'll coordinate that and get that back to you. The cameras, the recording system, we're, we're already in place. We're all wired up. Uh, we even have TV. so. Uh, we're way ahead of most towns on that respect, so I don't think it's going to be a huge cost, but I'll get, I'll get that for you by the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You guys have any more questions before you leave? I, let, me, let me offer just one more short comment. Um, one thing that we have been <coughs> discussing uh, at some length with staff is, is some enhanced code enforcement, specifically land use code and similar matters. And so one of the purposes with circulating the questionnaire is not necessarily, well, 
I I is to draw attention to the fact that that, that is an option uh, as far as use of the court. So you may get some feedback in the town when, when we start prosecuting some of those cases, but there are at least a handful around town that we're going to be working on. So. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Do yeah, you have anything for him? You look like you were going to. Yeah. Do, do you need action from us to move forward? or? We're in discussion agenda. We can't do anything in action. That's right. Yeah. At, at this time, we don't. We're just we giving don't. guidance. Yeah. That's it. But if we don't give. Okay. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Guidance is all we can do right now. Thank you all. Thank you for having Thank you. I, I, I can't hear Trustee Wakeman. I can take any guidance that you would like to give, though. I'll write it down and we'll get her done. But I can't hear you if you had a... Uh, There's more so the fact it's on a discussion agenda. If you're asking for guidance or something that it, we can't have a true discussion and then actually give guidance, you know, vote on something and say okay. this is the way it needs to be. It should gotcha. be an action agenda item is what she's referring to. So Good there's enough. a whole group actually saying yes or no. <clears throat> All right, next up, Millican Waterworks. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll start off on this and then turn it over to uh, Attorney Matt Gould. Um, I've had meetings with Brett Hall and we've discussed the situation with the pool and just to give you a quick sum of how things have transpired initially the town was in was in agreement with lot holdings uh, after a period of time the wake board company came in and then they were gone and then it was the town lot holdings and trpr that lasted one year at the end of that period of time, Lot Holdings, Centennial Crossings Metro Districts, and TRPR came into a contractual agreement for the operation of the pool. The town is only under contract with Lot Holdings. We were aware of that e agreement, but that agreement uh, expired a year and a half ago. Uh, TRPR has not been a member to any agreement for that period of time. When I was doing the research for the board on the uh, freezing damages at the pool that the town paid $93,000 on, it became apparent that we didn't have the ability to deal with TRPR because they were not in standing under any contract. I talked with Matt and we got into a conundrum about what to do. So things kind of went on for a little bit. He got in contact with Lot Holdings attorney and found out that There was an agreement between Lot Holdings, Centennial Crossings, and TRPR. Uh, n no, I don't believe TRPR is a member is a party to any agreement with those other two. Not now, at this point. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah. Um, that's correct. They're not a member of any deal now. So when I was talking with Brett, I said. We don't have anyone that we can talk to about the damages, about the management. I said, the only people we have is you. And we've got someone running the pool for the town, but the town has no say in it. And it's, it's a very difficult position. We don't know where to go on that. Um, Brett suggested that we send him the bill for the $93,000 and a request that we enter into an agreement between the town, Centennial Crossings, Lot Holdings, and TRPR, and we're all on the same agreement together. <coughs> and he pointed out that our agreement with Lot Holdings 
and ourselves right now says that they can do different things at the building without a say of the town. Things started discussing a little more and it came around to where I said, well, why don't we just give the pool to TRPR and get the heck out of it because we don't have any say in it. All we seem to have is a responsibility to make repairs to the project once they happen and we don't have any say on who or what to keep damages from happening. Um, we talked about that and Brett said he thought that would be a smart way to handle it and if we were agreeable to turning the pool over to the recreational district, he would turn his part of it over to the recreational district and then we'd all be away from the pool and it would be TRPR's responsibility. So those are kind of the conversations that I've had. One, send them a billing. I said, if, you, if I send you a billing and we work towards an agreement where we can all work on this and have TRPR on the agreement, uh, I'm sure the town would work with you on, the, on those costs and maybe share those. Um, I'm starting to think the most logical thing to do is turn the pool over to the rec district and let the rec district handle it. That way they can handle the expenses, the incomes, and everything else, and we are not out there with liabilities or expenses. And uh, we can quit worrying about that because that's the purpose of a rec district. When you have a rec district in a location like this, you usually have them just operate the pools and you know the, uh, the recreational uh, games, the sports, that kind of thing. So that's where I ended up on it. So I'll throw this over to Matt. He's been talking with the attorneys and whatnot, looking for direction from me and uh, trying to figure out how are we gonna go forward on this. So I, I guess what I have to add here is I, I see that one of two things needs to be done. Either we need to get a, uh, a live contract to which TRPR is a party because it's in possession uh, and probably uh, the Metro District needs to be a party as well because they have the right to possession. We want to be a party to that agreement because we're the owner and I think we would use that agreement to expand our inspection rights if they would agree to that. Uh, and also, um, you know, any kind of power to give notice of needed repairs. The other option that Tim brought up is, I, I understand to simply be the idea that we would deed the pool to TRPR and step away. And we could potentially do that with a condition that, that they would hold title as long as it's used uh, as a, a recreational pool facility. So, I don't... I'm, I'm not bought into either of those options, but I think we wanted to hear the board discuss those ideas and get a sense for what direction the board preferred. Well, I think that before we go any farther, and I think that one, this should be brought up in a work session. We should have a work session on it, bring all parties together and talk about it. Um, two, I think sending a bill to Paul Irwin is a bunch of BS because the board approved to pay that bill for that repair. We said, sat down and we discussed it and we said we were going to pay that bill. And then reneging and sending them a bill is kind of not cool in my eyes. Um, but again, I would rather take this right off here and go into a work session and have everyone sit down. I don't know how you guys feel about that. But I think that's the best way to do it. Bring all the parties, accountable parties together. If they want to bring their attorneys, let them bring their attorneys. And we discuss what we feel was going to be the future of the pool. Get rid of it or we get what we want. Sound fair? I would agree with that. I don't think this is an item that should be brought up in the, in the discussion agenda when it's new to us. Mm -hmm. To me, all these discussion items right here should be work session items uh, that we discuss before it's brought into a, a public meeting and the first time the board's finding out about it. Um, I would consider all those work session agenda items. If you remember several weeks ago at the request of the board I sent you a packet of information on the billings and the contracts and we were trying to have that on a work session. 
You remember that? Who sets the work session agenda? The mayor? No, no, I don't do the work session agenda. That's all on me. Okay. So, Understood. I, th I think that we get more accomplished talking about this in a work session than we do at a discussion meeting that we're sitting at right now. Especially when it's first time information. So, well, now we know. Work session on that one. <laughs> okay. We'll put it on check work session. Good. If you check your email, you'll find that, that packet of information and on it. Remember, I don't have a government email anymore. I and I, I, I will suggest that if there's some agreement that we don't want to pursue those costs, that. that that may simplify this a fair amount. Because that's been, that uncertainty, I, you know, that, the lack of clarification on that issue is has slowed us down. Uh, so, so sounds great. I think a work session would work. Thank you. Moving on to the next one, which is building official services. <laughs> um, Pepper, is she still here? Oh, there you go. We'll let you have this one. What is this? Okay, no I'm idea. not sure what you had in mind, but uh, there is an RFP out for uh, building services. Our current um, company had some proposed changes in rates, which necessitates us going out with an RFP. And those um, have been advertised. The bids are due next Thursday, if I remember correctly. And we are hoping to have that on your agenda for the 25th to consider. Um, and we can have a full report at, at that time. Anything else I'm forgetting? Thank you. It has to go with the recording process, too, of our um, filing of permits electronically. That was one of the main reasons we had to do that. We received notice from our current permit software uh, supplier that we were not able to continue using their product without also using their building official services. So that was another. Those are two separate entities though, right? Not the building services company that we're using for inspections, but that's the program software that we use. Correct. So that's two separate issues, right? The permit yeah. software that we use right now is owned by our company that we previously used for building um, official services. And they go hand in hand apparently that's what we were advised so we've been given 60 days to change software permit software or um, you know determine what we're going to do we've researched permit software it's extremely expensive um, to go with a different type of software that's not connected with a building official services company um, anywhere between 50 and a hundred thousand dollars a year plus additional amounts of 10 to 30 to migrate data to <laughs> from our existing permit software to the new. Um, so we decided uh, that in the, the change in proposed change in the rates. The software that we have now, what company does that belong to? It belongs to SafeBuilt. And since ICSC, uh, we've had uh, temporary help trying to get all that stuff logged on the computer and whatnot. And about a month ago, I got notified from them that uh, the use of their system is contingent upon us working with them. And uh, they had to send me a cease and desist order on that, you know, that we have till the end of the year, till the end of December. December uh, 18th is December our date. December 18th, and then we're off that system. Uh, that was news to me. We immediately tried to figure out how to do an RFP, see what their fees would be versus other folks' fees and what systems we could use. Uh, since that time, uh, planning has been looking at migrating all the work that we've done all summer long to another system and what that would take. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, you guys have any other questions about 
building services. Mm -hmm. well. All right, next thing is home businesses. Home businesses. Uh, you better stay up here. You're going to be on this one too. Home businesses are um, an item that I've uh, researched due to people filing complaints, and I've been going through the records and whatnot. Um, I see uh, issues that have been brought in front of the board back to 2015 that the board made decisions on and nobody ever followed through on it. Uh, we are in the land code, uh, land use code update. We have people coming in also at applying for business use in a residential property and We've got a lot of issues. Uh, did you send out the code with the different types of land use to the board? Did they get that? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Um, we need some direction on that uh, as to how to go forward and how to proceed on some of this stuff. My point and my position is if we've got a code on the books and it says, uh, if you have a bunch of trees on the left hand side of your sidewalk and that's against the code that uh, I have to send someone out to give a violation for having a lot of trees on the left hand side of a sidewalk you know just as an example um, if it's in the code it needs to be enforced if there's things in the code that don't make sense and we need to change it we need to change the code I think that happens on the national level too right now but uh, uh, Pepper was uh, talking to me about what constitutes a home business and um, I don't know how much of that's discretionary or if we just followed strictly what the code says our current code some of the parameters for a home occupation are that it's restricted to the occupants of the dwelling plus one outside employee on-street parking is allowed. A maximum of 10 clients can visit the home in one day. There can be no disruption to the residential character of the neighborhood or create noise or environmental hazards. Um, the maximum amount of the dwelling that can be devoted to the home occupation is 1,000 square feet or 30% of the dwelling, whichever is less. Um, or 720 up to 720 square feet of an accessory structure which would be a garage um, home occupations that can't meet those standards are allowed to apply for a conditional use permit which would go through uh, the Planning Commission and the board in 2015 um, there was an ordinance that was brought before the trustees to discuss some changes to the code um, they discussed home occupations as well as home businesses and they differentiated between the two a home business as opposed to a home occupation is a home occupation that is subject to use by special review um, and it provided some additional clarification which actually lists language that I'm accustomed to in other municipalities which is that the occupa home occupation has to be carried on exclusively within the dwelling or the enclosed garage or accessory building has to be clearly incidental and secondary to the primary residential use of the property <coughs> can't have any exterior um, outdoor display or storage of materials vehicles trailers or equipment uh, and some other things in here so you know as Millican strives to strike a balance between encouraging what I consider to be cottage industry um, that maybe is not quite ready to go uh, make the full investment in a commercial property or a commercial space we have to kind of walk the line between what we consider to be compatible with the residential neighborhood and and what we do not so let me give you some examples of some business licenses that have come before us um, that I've wondered if they really meet our home occupation definition um, we had uh, an individual uh, several individuals apply for a towing company um, so 
I always ask questions, are you going to store the tow trucks there? Are you planning on bring, bringing wrecked vehicles home even overnight before they go to uh, an impound lot? You know, things of these nature, this nature, because well, some of those tow trucks can be pretty big. We had a gentleman that wanted to do a home occupation for a roofing company. So my question was, do you bring trailers home? Do you bring product home? Do you store pallets of shingles on your property? On these types of questions just to s gauge the impact to the residential neighborhood. Um, we also had a gentleman that um, was looking to do a transmission and auto repair on a limited basis. So, you know, the question is what kind of environmental hazards may we have there? Is that compatible with the residential neighborhood? Um, so, again, our parameters are they can park on the street, 1,000 square feet of the home or 30 percent, whichever is less, up to 720 square feet of an accessory building, which would be a third three-car garage, to give you a perspective. They can have an employee. Uh, they can have 10 clients per day at the house. Um, and then we, we restrict that they can't um, disrupt the residential character of the neighborhood. So I would interpret that as increased traffic, these types of things, or create noise or environmental hazards. So um, we had a, quite a discussion on this at the advisory group meeting. I, I regret that Mayor Pro Tem Austin is not here to weigh in because she was part of that with the Planning Commission last week. Our consultants with the Land Use Code update <coughs> presented some, some concepts, asked some pretty good questions, um, discussed what other communities allow and what they don't allow. And uh, so it's something that will be coming to you in a draft of the Land Use Code update. And um, you might want to take a look at what the Planning Commission, the advisory group, the consultants and staff are recommending for changes for home occupations. We don't want to discourage the development of our commercial area. At the same time, we don't want to discourage entrepreneurship either and startup businesses. Typically, communities have an incubator. Um, perhaps we can investigate whether we can apply for some grants and and take a look at that. But those are really great places for industries to get going that really don't meet home occupation. They're a little bit too heavy activity. Um, but they can't afford to build their own greenfield development and building and, uh, and open up a full scale shop just yet. They need some startup space. We don't really have that here. So that is why we brought home occupations to you. And when they don't get a business license and they don't report and they don't do stuff, we don't get any tax benefit for it. This is one of those things that keeps coming up with board after board after board after board. It's a dead horse that keeps beat, getting beat every board, every new bunch of elected officials. I've read several board <laughs> meetings where it's been dealt with and you guys have made decisions and no one's followed through on it. That's why I said if it's in the code and it needs to be addressed, it will be addressed unless you want to get it taken out of the code. It's just a forewarning that it, it's a new game in town. It's going to happen. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm for home occupations, I'm home, you know, for home businesses. Millican isn't, uh, you know, we're growing, obviously, but we're also a small community still at the same time. Not one person in this <coughs> community has the money to go out and buy property from lot holdings or anyone else and build a $3 million investment. It ain't going to happen. We can't go to Greeley and rent freaking resident, you know, commercial property for $100 a square foot. That ain't going to happen. You know, so we got to find a way to work with the people. If it's not a safety issue and it's not messing up the community, we got to find a way to work with them. I mean, we can't just crush them and shut them off and lock them out. I mean, some of the businesses in this town, I can tell you, have been working out of their garage for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. They're some of the best mechanics and welders I know. So before we start stepping all over everybody, I want to think about what the ramifications of the community is and the people that have been here a long time. 
because I'm all about watching the you know picket line show up of angry people. So what's the board you want to look at that and change that? I eliminate say we sit down, businesses have provision restrictions. I wouldn't suggest eliminating it. Every every community has home occupation um, provisions for that. Mm -hmm. The key is the right balance between keeping the residential character of the neighborhood and reducing uh, or managing the impacts from the business to neighbors, mm -hmm. um, traffic, and those types of things. I think the fact that I have not fielded a lot of complaint calls for the most part in the two years that I've been here for home occupations uh, indicates that there's a high tolerance for home-based um, businesses which are different than home occupations because home occupations are enclosed completely within the residential dwelling. So in other words, a tow truck with advertising on the side of it is, not, is a home business. It's not a home occupation by most definitions because it's visible from the outside of the dwelling. Mm -hmm. that, that said, we haven't denied any home occupations. We've just had some questions on some as to whether they really fit and are compatible within a residential neighborhood. I'll give you another example. We had a gentleman that wanted me to write a zoning compliance letter so he could get his auto auction license. Um, having an office to do car sales or internet sales by phone or internet in and of itself is not against the zoning and is, you know, is, is actually in compliance with home occupation. But to craft a letter to allow him to get an auction license without knowing where these cars that he's purchasing at auction are going uh, can be a little bit problematic. What we've done is we've worked with, um, with Cheryl and um, I've drafted letters with conditions of approval and asked them to sign it so that we don't have these types of impacts, right? You can have the tow trucks there, but you can't bring wrecked cars home leaking all over the you know, driveway mm -hmm. and things of this nature. You can bring the tow trucks home and leave from there, um, but we can't have wrecked automobiles in a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That clearly is not in keeping, that's more of an impound situation. Mm -hmm. So we've been striking a balance, and as I mentioned, the fact that we don't have a ton of neighbors calling um, is good news, but we do have some areas that, as Administrator Singwald mentioned, we, we have some old things hanging out there that may need to be addressed because the board weighed in on them. And I do get calls where people are concerned that when someone moves in and does something on a property next to them where they think that there is code to protect against that, and they fill their yard up with junk and they're uh, making a lot of noise and doing a lot of business, it lowers their property value. Mm -hmm. And now they've got to either live it out and live with it or move away and uh, have a hard time selling their property. It's not as desirable because they moved into a neighborhood, not into a business park. Mm -hmm. So the board's got to consider that too mm -hmm. when you make your decisions. I'm here to do what is on the books to do, but we need to change the books if we're not going to follow them rather than just keep looking the other way. We got to change them or define them or leave them as they are and start changing the way we look at things. Well, like, yeah, I think it comes down to a work session. You bring the rules up that you have, and we sit down and we discuss what can happen and what can't happen, figure out a compromise and a way to work with everyone. Work session item. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Oh, back up, Pepper. <laughs> Pepper sat down too early. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it's Western equipment and truck. Anything new? Wild, crazy. 
uh, I provided you with an updated uh, report on the cost. There's no change in the dollar amount. I just have been keeping up with the amount of staff time that is devoted. And um, I'm waiting for Matt to send us a bill <laughs> for his efforts on, on uh, Western equipment so we can include, um, include that in our cost count. In the meantime, I, I'll turn it over to Matt because I know he is, um, ex has a court date and um, coming up. Uh, yeah, there's not much new to report. He, uh, this, this is due in court on December 4th, I believe. Uh, and I'll follow up on the invoices. I don't see anybody have any questions on the police report or anything like that. There's nothing else. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Unless you have something else you want to say. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven minutes for adjourn.